Here it is. Okay. So uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, EHA <coughs> and the media for the interest in our work. I'm presenting on behalf of the Euroski uh, collab collaborators, and Euroski is Europe Stop Tyrosine Kinase Inhibitors in uh, Chronic Myeloid Leukemia. And the title, as you see here, uh, and this will be presented this afternoon in the Presidential Symposium, is Stopping kinase, uh, Tyrosine Kinase Inhibitors in a Very Large Cohort of European Chronic Myeloid Leukemia Patients, Results of the Euroski Trial. And the background is that the introduction of imatinib, the first tyrosine kinase inhibitor, has substantially improved survival in patient, patients with chronic myeloid leukemia in chronic phase. And this was around right after year 2000. And TKI therapy has then in clinical practice been, been instituted in most patients, but it has mostly been considered lifelong. However, there are some small clinical trials that previously shown that imatinib can be stopped in sustained deep molecular response. And between 40 to 60% of these patients maintain the molecular response even after stopping. So the purpose of the current trial was to determine the proportion of patients remaining in molecular remission after stopping TKI therapy in a larger setting, in a larger decentralized setting, and also to determine the predictive factors that will be able for you to determine beforehand uh, how long a patient should be treated and also uh, how successful a discontinuation attempt will be in the individual patient. So in total, 868 patients were registered in this trial in 11 European countries. And they were chronic myeloid leukemia patients in chronic phase. And uh, as a prerequisite before entering the trial, they had to had at least three years of TKI therapy and also been in deep molecular remission, what we call MR4, corresponding to 0.01% uh, BCR able copies on the international scale. And they had to be in MR4 for at least one year prior to study entry. And only patients who had not failed on any TKI therapy were included, so not patients that had been on multiple lines of therapy. So this shows you the outline of the study, and uh, to the, up here you see once again to the left, TKI treatment for at least three years, and MR4, a very good therapy, response for one year. Then they entered a screening phase after signing informed consent, uh, where MR4 was validated in one of six uh, central labs, and if this could be done, um, MR4 verified, therapy was then stopped and the patients followed every four weeks for six months, every six weeks thereafter. And then from year two or three, they were followed uh, every three months. And if they had at any of these times during this follow-up, a relapse defined as loss of MMR then they were restarted on therapy. So the results are that with a medium follow-up of 10 months, 62% of the patients still were in deep molecular emission after six months of therapy. And at 12 months, this figure, this number was uh, 56%. We tried to correlate this to gender, age, or risk score, uh, but neither one of those factors showed a significant association with the success of stopping of TKI therapy. However, longer duration of TKI therapy and longer duration of molecular response, MR4, prior to TKI stop correlated to a higher probability of, success, of successful stopping. So, uh, and the cutoff, uh, we have identified a cutoff uh, suitable for imatinib therapy, that is around six years. So with a minimal p-value approach, about six years of therapy would be optimal for therapy prior to performing a stop attempt. So the conclusions are, with inclusion and relapse criteria less strict than in many previous TKI cessation, cessation trials, and with decentralized but standardized disease monitoring, stopping TKI therapy in a large cohort of CML patients 
with a very good therapy response, was feasible and safe. The impact on the quality of life for patients and the savings in treatment costs for the European healthcare systems will be analyzed in more detail. So thank you very much and I'll take questions. Thank you, thank you for this uh, groundbreaking analysis, please. Hi, um, I'd like to ask please, how long do you think you will, how far out do you think you'd have to go uh, until, until you have true confidence in, in, in your results about that? And the other thing is, are there any, uh, any concerns about uh, treatment refractory disease or when, if, when disease does relapse? Well, to answer the first question, these patients need to be followed also after. This is a three-year trial, but you need to keep following the patients. And the longest follow-up we have now is from the STEM study. And uh, Professor Mahoney is sitting in front of you, and he's just, I think, reporting on the follow-up of, of the first STEM study up to eight or nine years, uh, seven, eight, nine years. And there is a <coughs> continuous plateau in that trial. Uh, so most of these recurrences appear quite early after stop. Um, and regarding um, emergence of any resistant disease, I mean, so far it has been shown that all patients that do relapse, they are, uh, again, sensitive when you put them back on the TKI therapy. So there's no real uh, evidence for any escape of the disease in this setting. But then I should add that this is done in patients that have been on TKI's first line or on second line TKI's because of toxicity to first line. So there are no patients that have shown any failure or resistance to the disease before stopping. And I think that is of importance. Based on your analysis, could you further fine tune, sharpen the criteria of patients that could stop with TKI with a zero chance of relapse disease? Well, that would, uh, of course, be the ultimate goal. I don't think we will reach zero, but I think we can, get, we can give, give better numbers and a better basis information to our patients. Right. I think what res remains to be looked at here is the different levels of, uh, of residual disease when you enter, right. enter into the trial and enter into this situation. Now my second question has to do with euros. Uh, how many euros can you spare in Europe if you can take away TKI, TKI inhib TK inhibitors in many patients? Did you I, make I, any calculations there? I, I, I know Professor Mahoun has done some of these uh, uh -huh. calculations, so I'll defer to him. Welcome, Professor Mahoun. Yeah. We have not performed this calculation in the Euroscheme. But I can tell you that in France, with the two STEAM studies, STEAM 1 and STEAM 2 study, which were the preliminary studies stopping treatment, uh, uh, we have saved 20 million of euro. 20 million yeah. on an annual basis. Yeah, it's it's continued to progress because obviously some of patients are still off treatment. Worthwhile. Any further issues to be addressed? If not, thank you again. Thank you.